No, I think uh, economically it's a mixed economy. Uh, you have the mixture of the state planning and the market. And you have the private sector and state sector. Politically, it's about the selection plus election, not just election. You know, that's very important. And selection is based on rigorous criteria, your competence, your performance. Yeah. And socially, it's about the interaction between society and the state, rather than confrontation between society and the state. So this is the key features of China model. Yes, and uh, about uh, diplomacy, mm. if we speak about diplomacy, we saw that the President Xi yeah. is traveling a lot and meeting a lot of... Uh, what yeah. do you think about Chinese diplomacy? Is also this... Uh, yeah, now, uh, since Xi Jinping came to power, uh, China is more active a nectar in international affairs because he understands China's role uh, is already bigger than any time in China's recent history and many countries expect China to play a greater role. We are already the second largest economy and in many, on many issues you have to explain your position. So, so this is very important. If you would uh, have to give a, a suggestion to Europe following the Chinese model on uh, economic reforms and economy, which suggestion could you give in this no, not, moment uh, of crisis? Yeah, in uh, well, I just feel that uh, one key feature of the China model is its ability to adapt to the changing circumstance. So in the case of China, reform, 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 this is the key message all the time. You try to improve yourself all the time. This is something you know, where the West in general and Europe in particular lacks how to reform itself. Yeah. And actually all countries, all institutions need some kind of reforms today. Yeah. But China is uh, arguably one of very few countries that can really carry out reforms. Maybe Europe is uh, too bureaucratic and slow. Maybe we should find a way in Europe, what do you think? It's not easy, but indeed it's... Um, you look at the people's complaints about the EU <laughs> and uh, uh, so you have to fix this problem, yeah. make the institution more competent. They are too complicated sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The point is uh, you need reform-minded leaders and you need a team of leaders who can carry out reforms. But I don't envy you, it's not easy. You have uh, nation states as the building blocks and uh, politicians from different countries work together. It's not easy. Which are the most urgent reforms for Europe now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One or two that, according to you, Europe should really do at the moment. Which, uh, Maybe too bureaucratic, yeah. a bit loss loss of touch with uh, grassroots, with uh, uh, certain class of people in every country. Yeah. So so this is something you, know, uh, you need the right feedback before you can really work in the interest of these peoples, otherwise difficult. And uh, on international trade, yeah. uh, what do you think? Europe should also have a different model? Uh, I'm not sure, you know, uh, for trade, because uh, essentially it's uh, carried out at the national level. And uh, Europe provides, you know, certain criteria, certain conditions to facilitate trade with different countries, which on the whole doing a good job, I must say. 
So uh, for China and Europe, uh, each other largest China, EU is China's largest trading partner. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, sometimes Last Europe, question. Yeah, okay. Okay. sometimes Europe it's a little bit closed. Sometimes we see that uh, difficult to negotiate. Know, there are too many, you know, gridlocks, too many restrictions, and uh, it's a problem of uh, uh, European institutions. Yeah, I've heard about this.